morning, YouTube. Hope you guys are doing well. A little bit of a different video this morning. We are doing something very exciting for me. Um, I had gotten reached out to by one of you guys and asked to do some consulting on a garage design and build. So um, we're headed across the state to La Crosse, Wisconsin area, meeting with, up with Jason. His home is already under construction. It's an attached garage, uh, but we are going to walk through some things. It's in the framing stage right now, potentially uh, make some changes with his builder, uh, and then kind of finalize some of the finishing touches and design of the garage. So obviously it's in the framing stage, so there's not much we can do from a moving walls and, and that sort of thing. But uh, what we can do is really talk about the layout, the setup, the workflow of his garage and where things are gonna go, where the pressure washer is gonna go, where the cabinets are gonna go, where we need to put the outlets since the electrical has not been installed, where we need to run uh, the water. I'm very excited about this. My first consulting opportunity for um, doing garage design and upgrades. This will be the before video. We will have an after video as well. This video will kind of be a bit of a vlog slash uh, garage overview before. So we're gonna kind of see how this one goes. We'll take you along for the ride and uh, let me know in the comments below what you wanna see differently or what things that you wanna see after we get more into this video uh, on future garage builds. All right, let's get to it. My name is Jason. I, I live in Wisconsin. I'm married with two boys, uh, 11 and 15. And uh, we bought our dream lot. It's on a lake. We bought our dream lot about 11 years ago. And we've been saving and planning and dreaming and more saving and more planning for the last 11 years. And uh, we finally decided this is a year that that we make it happen. So the, the garage is gonna be my territory. That's the one spot in the house that, that I get for myself. So I want it to be perfect. Still trying to figure out exactly what perfect is, because I think there's there's a lot of things that I really want, I just don't know what they are yet. Some some things that are really important for me, so, so we're in Wisconsin, it gets really cold here in the wintertime and it gets pretty hot and muggy in, in the summertime, but I wanted a spot that I could wash our cars regardless of, of what season it is. And I don't want to have to worry about the weather if I want to wash my car. Um, so that's a big one, but we also wanted a lot of storage. Uh, we're on the lake, so we're going to need a lot of things that uh, we need to, to store, especially off season. But I'm a little OCD. My wife says I'm a lot OCD. And I, I don't want to have all the storage be ugly and right in front of you. And I, I don't want to have the garage that is so packed with junk that we can't park our, our cars inside. We, we went through a bunch of different iterations on what the, the garage could look like. And we looked at, uh, so our, our lot will only fit three stalls of a garage. I, of course, wanted four or five, but we have to limit it to three. We looked at having uh, just a traditional three stall garage. The more we talked and, and thought about it and, and planned it out, we, we really want two different spaces. We want one part of our garage kind of to be the like the show garage sort of where it looks really nice and, and classy and that's where the nice car is going to go and then the other part of the garage we want to be the utility part uh, where that's where we're 
going to have to hang the the rake and shovel and stuff like that up on the wall and we're going to have the the cabinets and whatever so we we finally decided that we're going to have a split garage we'll have a, a one stall garage that's going to be the the show garage and then we'll have a two stall garage that'll be more of the utility part we of course wanted a, a heated garage be in wisconsin we we want to keep it a reasonable temperature in in the winter time um, <clears throat> but I, I wanted something that is really well planned out and everything looks like it belongs so we're we're trying to figure out a way to run hoses to wash the car where it's not going to have to run across the the garage or we won't have to hook up to an outside faucet outside and then and then run it in and leave the door part way open so I want them to have their own spot. I want to have an air compressor that's that's hidden yet very uh, that's hidden yet very accessible. And then I of course want to have a lot of storage for our, our boys. I mean they have every kind of athletic ball imaginable. They have like 12 footballs, I don't know how many soccer balls, basketballs, you name it. And I want to, right now our, our current solution is not great, so I want to find a solution that has those accessible, yet they're, they're out of the way. So something where it's just super organized and, and stays that way. Whether that's the, the shovel and rake hanging on the wall in an organized fashion, or the, uh, the sports equipment being put off to the side, or whether it's the air compressor hose hanging down from the ceiling and, and out of the way, I just wanted everything put together. I also have this vision, I don't know if it's gonna pan out yet or not, but I, I have this vision where I wanna have an air curtain in the garage. We have this problem in our family where we leave doors open that shouldn't be open, and especially the garage doors when, you know, it's probably the coldest day of the year, that's when uh, one of us in the family decides to leave the garage door open. So my idea is to have an air curtain that when the garage doors go open, the air curtain turns on and keeps the heat inside the garage during the winter time or, um, you know, in the, the summer, there's mosquitoes everywhere. So I'd love a way to keep the bugs on the outside of the garage so that way there's still a comfortable environment inside. We officially joined the Tesla family a couple of years ago and I, I tell you it's been life-changing. It's been super impactful in many positive ways on not just my life but our, our family's lives and uh, you know we're that's another thing that we're adding to the home is we're gonna have uh, Wisconsin's first Tesla solar roof. I'm absolutely pumped about that. I could talk more about that but we're here to talk about the garage so I'm gonna try to stay focused um, but the, the one show car stall, uh, I, selfishly, I, I want that to be our Tesla stall. So I envision uh, one wall that's kind of my, my Tesla tribute where um, it'll probably be red and it'll, it'll have the Tesla logo on there. That in itself will look pretty neat, but I, I want to have a really nice finished floor. I would love to have it looking almost like a, a Tesla showroom, yet it still has to be a functional garage. We're going to have to somehow blend those two ideas together. I, I definitely want it to be clean and I want it to be Tesla themed and I, I want it to be as clean as a Model 3 or Model Y dash where it's just simple and basic yet, yet very, very powerful. So minimalistic is a, a great way to describe what I'm looking for there. We have several different storage use cases. Number one, on our, our single stall garage, it's actually longer. We, we extended the length of it to run that whole entire side of the house. We wanted to get as much storage space out of there as we could. So what we're going to do is make the front half of it a standard size garage, a standard depth garage. We'll make sure that it's big enough to fit my future Cybertruck. The back half of it, uh, it'll be approximately 10 to 12 feet deep. Uh, that's going to be our the storage part of our garage where it's okay if that's a little ugly, a little messy, filled with stuff. There's gonna be some totes back there and everything else that I don't wanna see, but in that, that back half, we're gonna have a smaller overhead garage door. That's gonna be where we keep the lawnmower and the snow, snow blower and, and stuff like that. Uh, and a whole bunch of totes and, and the bikes and, and whatever else. That'll be, that'll be hidden, that'll be drywalled off and, and separate. And then in the Tesla stall, 
Uh, there's not going to be any storage in around it. There will be power walls on, on one wall, uh, but that'll be it for there. In the two-car stall, the, the more utilitarian part of the garage, uh, we're going to have a, a bank of uh, cabinets on the, the back wall of the garage, and then we'll, we'll have some base cabinets, and then we'll also have some upper cabinets as well. And then above the base cabinets, of course, we'll have, we'll have a countertop, uh, but then we'll, we'll have a, a sink there. Uh, you mentioned hockey, so my two boys and I were, were very big into hockey. Uh, one problem that we have as a hockey family, uh, both of my boys are goalies, and all three of us are, are hockey officials and then I'm a coach. So we have a ton of hockey equipment. We usually don't have anywhere to put it and wherever we do put it, it's kind of stinky. We, we need somewhere to put it. So we built um, a, like a, a hockey closet, a hockey storage closet that we're gonna have some exhaust fans in there. And then we're going to uh, finish it so that way it, it's, the shelves fit perfectly uh, with the size of our, our hockey bags. We'll have some boot warmers in there to dry our skates off. I'm really excited about that. I think that's going to be great. And then, of course, in the, the summer, it'll be more of a baseball closet. And in the, the fall, it'll be more of a, a football closet. In, in the time that I've been working with Sean, I would tell everyone out there that uh, it's made my life so much easier. And I was trying to take the time to plan every little thing that we wanted to do. And I'm not an expert when it comes to air compressors and I'm not an expert when it comes to air curtains and I have no idea what I'm looking at when I'm talking about a pressure washer system for the cars. When you get an expert involved, you get the advice that you want and you get it so much faster and it's just way easier. So the, the question that you're asking, uh, really my, my biggest advice besides call Sean, my, my biggest advice is take more time than what you think you need and plan it out. And my wife and I have been planning this home for 11 years and it's still not enough time. It's not, we bought the lot 11 years ago and we've been planning ever since then. I've been planning just the garage specifically, like really planning it, putting, putting anywhere from a half hour to a couple of hours a day into it for several months now and it's still not even enough time. Could have planned it a long time ago and just said throw this in over there and that in over there and just get it done. But in the end, I'd be happy it's a new home, but I wouldn't be ecstatic. It wouldn't be my dream come true. And that's really what we're going for. We're going for a dream garage. So my advice would be to take all the time you can to plan it out ahead of time. What would I tell my future self? Future self, I hope that all of your current self troubles and hassles and late nights and sleepless nights, I hope it's worth it, man, because I've really been struggling here and you better be happy. <laughs> What's up, guys? On the way home now. Oh, man, what an awesome day with Jason uh, walking through his garage and working on some of the finer details and points of stuff that we got to purchase, we got to get installed, uh, see what it looks like, and we, we've got a really good layout going and got that all down pat. But just an awesome day, um, okay weather, uh, but yeah, I think what we're going to try and do is get up to, um, get back up there kind of after the garage floor gets poured and take a look at some things. But right now with the garage still under construction and the floor not poured, what we need to do is look at the lighting, how we he's going to have spray foam in between the garage and the bonus room that's up above the garage. So we need to get that lighting worked out pretty quickly uh, because spray foam is going to be coming shortly. So um, we got to get that looked at. we got to order the pressure washer system from Obsessed Garage and get that laid out where we want to put that. We're also going to be running some... Uh, almost like a tray ceiling, but it's going to be really lines uh, for um, utilities. So we're gonna be running compressed air up there. We're gonna be running pressure washer hose up there. A lot of different things that we're gonna be running up there and potentially even a spot for some either up lighting or down lighting, uh, up light or down wash lighting in that area to kind of give it a, a special look. So um, super excited. The layout is gonna be bang on. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna take a look at some other things to make sure that this garage turns out exactly how we want it to. But 
awesome day. So glad I took a vacation from my full-time job to go and do this. I'm super excited. If any of you guys want to reach out to me uh, for you know this consulting service or bring me in to talk through your garage or ask just some questions about your garage build and things that you need to think about, let me know. Again, detachgarageinfo at gmail.com. Uh, link up with me here in the comments below or um, also follow me on both Instagram and Twitter as well. So all these different ways to get in contact with me. Thank you guys so much for the support. This day could not have been better and I'm so excited to do this more in the future. Hope you guys are doing great. Thank you again for watching the video. Give it a uh, thumbs up if you're getting value from this and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again for watching Detached Garage.